Hello students, welcome to the biology class. Today we are going to start with our new chapter, Excretory Products in and their Elimination. Our unit, Human Physiology. What is excretion? Excretion is the elimination of metabolic nitrogenous waste product like ammonia, urea, uric acid from our body. So what is excretion? It is the elimination of metabolic nitrogenous toxic waste material like ammonia, urea, uric acid from the body. Depending upon the type of waste, we are having a three types of excretion that is ammonotelism, urotelism and uricotelism. What is ammonotelism? It is a process of excretion of ammonia. Animals which used to eliminate ammonia as the waste product known as ammonotelic animals. For example, aquatic invertebrates, aquatic insects, bony fishes, aquatic amphibians. It is highly toxic and it needs excess of water, readily soluble in water, and it is excreted by diffusion through body surface or the gill surface in the fish as ammonium ions. Next is Urotelism in which the process of excretion of urea and animals excrete urea as a waste product known as urolytic animals. Example is cartilaginous fishes, terrestrial and semi-aquatic amphibians like frogs and toads, aquatic and semi-aquatic reptiles like alligators, turtles and mammals. In liver, ammonia is converted into the less toxic nitrogenous waste product that is urea. So it needs only moderate quantity of water for the excretion. Some amount of urea may be retained in the kidney matrix of some animals to maintain a desired osmolarity. If the process of excretion is of uric acid, the animals known as uricolytic animals and the process is known as uricotelism. The example is insects, some land animals, land snail, terrestrial reptiles and the birds and they don't require for the excretion and highly insoluble in water. So these are the three modes of excretion depending upon the waste product and urotelism and uricotelism are needed for the water conservation because they required moderate or no water for the excretion whereas ammonia required the excess of water for the excretion and that takes place in the aquatic animals and that takes place in the land animals, in the birds animals Ammonia is most toxic waste product, urea is less and uric acid is least. We are having a different excretory organs from the lower animals to the higher animals. Starting from platyhelminthes, for example, liver fluke, excretory organ is protonephridia or the flame cells. Then annelids, for example, earthworm, the excretory organ is nephridia then insects, Malfigian tubules and Christine's prawns which are aquatic in habitat, they are having the excretory organ of antenal gland or green gland. Higher animals like your reptiles, birds, mammals, human being, the excretory organ is kidney. Next we will discuss the human excretory system consists of a pair of kidney, a pair of ureter, urinary bladder and urethra. So we will discuss a pair of kidney, ureters, bladder and urethra one by one. First that is the structure of kidney which is reddish brown bean shaped structure enclosed in the tough three layer fibrous capsule. It is situated between the level of the last thoracic and the third lumbar vertebra. The length of kidney is 12 to 10 to 12 centimeter, width is 
five to seven centimeter thickness is two to three and the average weight is 120 to 170 gram on the concave side of the kidney there is an opening helum or hillus through which the blood vessels renal artery or the renal vein renal nerves lymphatic duct and ureters enter the kidney on the concave side of the kidney there is an opening of the hilum or the hillus through which the blood vessels nerves lymphatic ducts ureter enter and that leads to the funnel shaped like structure of the cavity called as the renal pelvis with the projections called as the callus divided into the major and the minor callus Kidney has an outer cortex and inner medulla. Medulla has few conical projections known as the renal pyramids or medullary pyramids projecting into the callus. Cortex extends in between the medullary pyramid as the renal columns called as the columns of Bertini. Next, the structural and the functional unit of kidney which are present in the millions in each kidney is known as nephron nephron is having a two part that is a glomerulus and the renal tubules glomerulus is a tuff of capillaries formed by the afferent and the efferent arteriole afferent is a fine branch of the renal artery blood from the glomerulus is carried away by the efferent arteriole it begins with a double membrane wall cup like structure known as the bowman's capsule which enclose the glomerulus so glomerulus plus bowman's capsule is equal to the malpighian body or the renal carpus the tubules continue with the proximal convoluted tubule hanley's loop and the distal convoluted tubule hanley loops is having descending limbs and ascending limbs and that is of a hairpin like structure and DTC that is your distal convoluted tubule of many nephrons that open into the collecting duct. DTC of many nephrons open into the collecting duct. Collecting duct extends from the cortex inner part of medulla. They converge and open into the renal pelvis through the medullary pyramids in the callus and situate it. So the Malphigian body PCT, DCT are situated in the renal cortex and loops of Henle dips into the medulla. The efferent arterioles merging from the medullus forms a fine capillaries network called as the peritubular capillaries around the renal tubules. So these are the peritubular capillaries found around the renal tubules and minute vessel of this network run parallel to the Handless loop is known as Vasa recta. So we are having a two type, types of nephron. One is a cortical nephron which is 85% in which the handless loop is short, extends only a little into the medulla and the Vasa recta is absent. Whereas juxta medullary nephron, in this the handless loop is long and it runs deep into the medulla, Vasa recta present. Next is the urine formation means the functioning of the kidney, physiology of the kidney which consists of three processes that is glomerular filtration, reabsorption and the tubular secretion. First is glomerular filtration known as the ultrafiltration. Glomerular capillaries, blood pressure cause the filtration. Glomerular capillaries means efferent and the efferent arterioles, they cause the blood pressure that is filtration of the blood through the three layers endothelium of a glomerular blood vessel epithelium of a bowman's capsule and in between we are having a basement membrane so the epithelial cells that is podocytes of the bowman's capsules are arranged in an intricate manner leaving some minute spaces called as the filtration slits or the slit pores that continue then almost all the constituents of the blood plasma except the protein passes into the lumen of the Bowman's capsule. About 1000 or you can say the 1100 to 1200 of the blood is filtered by the kidney per minute. It constitutes one fifth of the blood pumps out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute. 
amount of the filtrates formed per minute is called as the granular filtration rate and the normal is 125 ml per minute or 180 liters per day. The second process is reabsorption as 180 liters of granular filtrate is produced daily but it is not going to be eliminated. Why? Because 99% of this is reabsorbed by the renal tubule. So the normal volume of urine released is only 1.5 liters. So from the filtrate, the glucose, amino acids, sodium are reabsorbed actively and nitrogen waste are absorbed passively. Passive reabsorption of waters occur in the initial segments of the nephron. So the PCT reabsorbs most of the nutrients and 70% of electrolytes and water. Simple cuboidal brush water epithelium of PCT increases the surface area for the absorption. Loops of Halle maintain the high osmolarity of medullary interstitial fluid. Descending is permeable to water but almost impermeable to the electrolytes. So this causes the concentrated filtrate. In ascending length, the minimum reabsorption occurs. It is impermeable to the water, but a lot the transport of electrolytes, so the filtrate gets diluted. In DCT, the conditional reabsorption of sodium and water takes place. Collecting that extends from the cortex to the inner part of medulla, it reabsorbs large amount of water to concentrate the urine. It also allows the passage of the urea to the medullary intestine to keep up the osmolarity. The last process of the urine formation is the tubular secretion. The cells of PCT and DCT maintain the ionic sodium potassium balance, acidic base balance of the body flu by the selective secretion of hydrogen ions, potassium and ammonia into the filtrate and absorption of bicarbonate from it. Collecting that maintains pH ionic balance of the blood by the secretion of hydrogen ions and the potassium ions. With this, we finish our human excretory system and the functioning of the kidneys that is the urine formation. In our next lesson, we will discuss about the countercurrent mechanism. With this, we are going to finish in our next section. So, till then, stay home, stay happy, have a nice day. Thank you.